Hello and welcome to the build guide for Stormclaw Druid. So this is the build I've been playing for the past oh, 10 days or so, trying to get as close to perfected as possible. And I think we're just about as far as I'm going to be able to bring it. There's not a whole lot more that I could possibly optimize on it. So now is time for the build guide. So this is something that has you know, existed for the last few. Season one, it was good, but season two, it's much better. It has a lot of value out of the vampiric powers, especially on basic attack speed, which is what it really, really wants. So this build is currently S tier in our max roll endgame, and that's probably where it's going to stay all season because it doesn't do anything badly. It does everything well. It does most things very well. It's not the best at any one particular thing. It's like not number one, but it's like number two or number three on just about everything for Druid. Um, so that gives it uh, a lot of just diversity and allows it to do all of the content with relatively little um, effort or little challenge. It can face tank all of the non-Lilith bosses. It can kill Lilith without having to... Um, Deal with some of her mechanics, as you can see from the video that we're playing. Uh, that's my own Uber Lilith kill. Uh, it's, it does a, a lot of single target damage, a lot more than I think people realize because the numbers come so quickly. They're not like one big thing. They're just a bunch of really fast numbers, but it does plenty of damage for that. It does Nightmare Dungeons 100 relatively easily. Uh, it farms well. It can just do everything you want. Tankiness is very good. So this is a this is just a very strong build right now that uh, is also easy to play. There's really not many downsides with it or any that I can think of outside of it's not the best clear and you know for some content that's what you might want but yeah it's just it's just really really good at everything it tries to do um so yeah let's get into it but I want to start by talking about a couple of things that I did not do in this build that I've seen some other build makers do and why I didn't do it the first thing I want to talk about is cataclysm so cataclysm is the um the ultimate that you can take in this one, we take Petrify. Why Petrify over Cataclysm? Well, in testing, Cataclysm does almost no damage, honestly. It really just does very, very little damage. It looks like it belongs here. It's a lightning build. It has stuff in this that sounds similar. Um, I think Lightning Strike versus like Lightning something else in Cataclysm, but they're not the same. They don't scale the same. And when you actually pull it up and let it do its own damage, Cataclysm does almost none. The only real benefit of Cataclysm, as far as I can see, is another source of Vulnerable, but we don't need that. We have plenty of sources of Vulnerable in this build, so it's not really beneficial. Whereas Petrify is a really strong CC with a huge multiplier, especially on bosses when it's up. That's far more valuable to me. Uh, I, to me, it's a no-brainer. Petrify wins easily all day, every day on every bit of content over Cataclysm. The other thing is I've seen Low Life still being used. Low Life was really popular in Season 1. Uh, largely because it allowed you to easily gain, well, you could you could do the bulwark thing anyway, but you can go low life, get a ton of da uh, damage reductions, be super, super tanky, while also doing incredible amounts of damage because bulwark was doing incredible amounts of damage. And we know now, as most of us have suspected for a long time, bulwark was very, very bugged. Uh, it's not supposed to do that much damage. It no longer does that much damage. So now the only benefit is being tanky. And you are very, very tanky in low life. But that's about it. You lose out on a lot of damage by going that way. You lose out on the ability to take another Keystone passive. Uh, particular one that we're using here is the one that gives us guaranteed crits when it's up. Uh, you have to take something that gives you no damage whatsoever. Doing fewer uh, crits also means we we get fewer of the multiple damage multipliers from crit we get right now, like like in Venom, like Petrify, and like its own its own multiplier. So that's a, that's a lot of damage lost right there. And it's also a lot harder to fit in. Uniques that increase your damage, like Tibalt's Will, God Slayer, because you need to get that um, that low life uh, damage reduction to make that build work. And so, to me, it doesn't really have a spot in the meta anywhere. There's nothing it does that the other build can't do, that a regular non low life can't do, and does arguably better than it. you can't. You, you don't need the damage at all for for bosses. Uber Lilith, it doesn't matter. She'll still one shot you, so it doesn't do you any good. Um, and Nightmare Dungeon 100 can be run without low life and will be run faster. So I, d I just don't see any any purpose for low life right now. We tried to do a variant and it just didn't make any sense. So low life I, to me is just out for season two. It doesn't have a role to play. Okay, so that covers all the early upfront stuff that I wanted to talk about. Let's get into the actual build, how it plays, how it functions. We won't go into too much detail because I have all this detail in the build guide. But just to give you guys a sense or a feel for what, how do you make this build and, and you know what it's doing to, to make it. So the first thing you have to have is great, stone, great Staff of the Crone. This is a must-have. The easiest way to get it is to farm Varshan. You might get unlucky like me. It takes 25 plus attempts, but hopefully you won't. You'll be able to get it relatively quickly. 
it is required to play this build. It is what allows you to use two basic attacks at the same time. It multiplies one of them and gives you a bunch of um, ranks to the other one, so you won't do damage without it. So you have to have this to, to play this build. Make sure you have it first. The other big things in here, Rapid's a ton of attack speed, which we're going to be scaling a lot of that with our Vampiric Powers as well. Uh, Mighty Storms is required to use the Keystone passive that we've chosen, which is going to be for Critical Strike Chance. We'll talk about that a little bit here, why we chose that, one of the other options that you have. Uh, Overcharge Loop is a lot of AoE damage. This is a very, very good item as well. Um, let's see. Ghost Walker is just going to be our movement, and uh, it's just good good uh, quality life as well. Edge Masters is more uh, more multiplicative damage, and then it's all uh, DR. So there's not anything in here outside of Chrome that's needed. Everything else is great, but not 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 necessary. Uh, as far as skills go, of course, we use Claw, which is also Storm Strike. We use Shred for mobility. This is a highly um, flexible spot. I like it for mobility, but you can put other things here. You can put, for example, um, you could put Bulwark here if you wanted it for some more, a little bit more unstoppable, not that you need it because of the Vampiric Power. Um, maybe a, just a little bit more tankiness. You can put a uh, built-in row here. You could put a bunch of things here, but shred it to me it makes the most sense for most of the content. A uh, hurricane is both the de uh, defense and also another source of vulnerable. Cyclone armor is just straight up defense. A uh, petrify we talked about that already. Why we like that, and then blood howl is a nice um, uh, defensive thing and also a heal and also attack speed. As far as our boons, we take Wariness, which is pretty much standard for just about every Druid build right now. We take Psy Talons for more Crit Strike Chance. We'll talk a little more about Crit Strike Chance when we talk about the um, um, the Keystone Passive. We take Bolster, which is now our only source of Fortify. We take Calm Before the Storm, which is a way to get more Petrifies up. And we take Overlord. We used to take Masochistic. This does not actually go up very often now because um, we are no longer in uh, Tempest Roar. This is the unique that would allow you to turn storm skills into werewolf skills. We no longer take that. It's it's just not worth it anymore, which means this masochistic only works now on claw. It does not work on storm strike. So instead we take the vampiric power that gives us way more healing anyway, and we take overlord to get more damage. So that's our boons. Let's talk about the vampiric powers as we've been mentioning them several times already. So we've got in here, we've got uh, Ravenous, we've got Moonrise, Hectic, Undying, Metamorphosis. Let's go through them one by one. So we'll start with Ravenous here. 20% chance to increase your attack speed of 40% of your total move speed for 6 seconds. This is an amazing, absolutely amazing Vampiric Power, and nothing can take more advantage of it than this build can. Stor uh, Stormclaw has by far the best benefit because there is no known attack cap or attack speed cap on basic attacks. So we can get 80% attack speed from this for most builds that would be all but 20 percent of the total amount that they could get before they hit the cap for us we can keep going so we get the 80 percent or close to it if we are moving speed cap we'll get the full amount we're generally close to it, but not quite there so we'll get almost 80 percent just from this one source which is an incredible amount of um, attack speed and since we don't use spirit we also have no like there's nothing to throttle us nothing to limit how much damage we can do by by uh, with attack speed so this is just an incredible um, vampiric power. This might be one of the best like combinations of a of a build and a vampiric power out of the entire season. Moonrise is also similarly really well coupled with this. These two together just are what make this go into S tier. So this is going to give our twenty percent attack speed. So that would be the attack speed cap between those two, Ravenous and Moonrise, if there was one, but there's not, so we can keep scaling it. We also have this one hundred sixty percent multiplicative basic skill damage, which is insane, and more movement speed for ten seconds. Then we have Hectic. Hectic is, uh, for every five basic ca uh, skills we cast, we have one of our active cooldowns reduced by two seconds. This is really nice for Petrify, but also the other, all, everything we, that we run here. Um, it's just really valuable. Undying, this is our only source of healing. It is an incredible source of he uh, healing. 3% life uh, every time we use a skill. Well, we use, we use skills all of the time, more than probably any other class or any other build in the game. And so we're going to be topped off almost immediately as soon as we start using this. And then the final one that made its way in a little bit later, at first we didn't have it, but it's definitely a better choice than we had. Metamorphosis is what uh, gives us the Unstoppable, which is, of course, good for its own reasons, but also it's going to be really good for uh, speed farming when we're using Tibalt's Will and get 40% more damage just all of the time, 40% multiplicative damage. When, as long as we're using this uh, consistently, we'll have it 100% of the time. All right, not going to go through the alternative vampiric powers, but there are some options in here if, in case you want to mix and match or play around with it a little bit. But I definitely recommend this setup um, for most players. All right, as far as the skill tree goes, we won't go into too much detail here. Just uh, 
all the, the, the basic stuff that you'd expect. Uh, the one thing we'll talk about is Toxic Claws and Venom. So on um, this build, Toxic Claws and Venom and anything with Poison actually got slightly worse because Toxic Claws only applies to uh, Werewolf skills and we didn't, we're no longer making a Storm Strike a Werewolf skill. However, anything that gets hit the Claw still counts. So any big targets still count. Um, anytime that you, you switch targets uh, you know, quickly, it'll still count. So it's still a very strong thing, but in like group settings, it's not quite as strong. Doesn't really matter because we do so much damage in group settings that you know they're not gonna live that long anyway, but that's uh, that's something to point out here. And then Earth and Might is the, um, the Keystone passive of choice. In number crunching, this just came out better under most circumstances than the other two options, which were Earth Sign Strength and Lupine Ferocity. It didn't come out dramatically better. Those are still perfectly, perfectly viable options. But even when you consider that Earth Sign might need, needs a legendary aspect, it still worked out better than those two choices. Um, having up more crits just means more multipliers going off more of the time. We talked about Venom. We talked about Petrify. And of course, crits own, own is like that's three multipliers. The more often you have them up. That makes a huge difference on your damage, so we definitely recommend Earth and Might with the uh, legendary passive that allows it to turn into a storm skill. Okay, we did boons already. We won't talk much Paragon board here. The big thing to know is that um, Electrify, I need to just enter this step back down here. Electrocution has been added. The actual Lightning Bolt's damage isn't that much, but the 20% uh, increased damage taken is a multiplier, and it's one of the strongest multipliers of any glyph, and so that has made its way into the build. We have redone all of our Paragon boards at the end game to make them more efficient. These are very, very, uh, in my opinion, very, very good boards, um, but uh, not too much to really need to talk about here. You see your glyphs here, and uh, you see how we got it set up, and of course you can go through the slider to get step by steps. Okay. On to gameplay. This gameplay is very easy. You can see it's only about seven or eight bullet points. Most of it revolves around trying to spam claw as much as possible while having your buffs up. That is the majority of the gameplay in here. I will probably add one thing in here that I don't think is in here. I don't see it, which is that we want to evade um, pretty much whenever we, we are about to run out of unstoppable so that we maintain our 40% damage. If we're playing the speed farming version, if you're not, then that's not as necessary you don't have to do it as much but that's a nice little 40 i mean 40 percent is a lot of damage so that's another thing to add in here but the rest of this stuff is pretty much as you would need it no matter what the variant is um yeah having up all your buffs is pretty much the only thing you have to worry about this build other than that it's just spamming and then of course you can use shred for mobility resource and cooldown management there's very little there's no resource management and then cooldown management is just around trying to get petrify as much as possible which is pretty much spamming claw so again pretty Pretty easy stuff to do. Okay, we already talked about the gearing and how that's set up. We'll go into a little bit here. Let's go a little bit into some of the stat priorities. A um, couple of things here that might trip up a few people. Critical strikes. We do build critical strike on our gear while also using the guaranteed critical strike keystone passive. Why do we do that? Well, for one, it's not 100% of the time. And for two, critical strikes are more likely to proc it than non-crits. So you want some critical strike chance in there. Critical strike damage. We used to scale this. We no longer scale this. Why? Because it's now additive and not multiplicative. So we look for multipliers instead. It's just not very good anymore. Uh, vulnerable, same thing. Used to scale hard vulnerable damage. We don't do it anymore because it's not a multiplier. Attack speed is huge in this build, and we scale as much as we possibly can, or almost as much as we possibly can. There are a few sources that just aren't strong enough, but for the most part, uh, that is what we do. One thing I should add in here that I'm noticing is not here that I thought was, is we should talk about damage to distant, damage to close. Uh, I get a lot of questions about why do we do damage to distant, and we do both of those, and this is why. Thunderstruck. Uh, damage to close and damage to distance provide you 20% uh, of that uh, stat as a multiplier. So when we have, for example, 10% damage to distant, it's 2% a 2 multiplier. I mean, that's an additive multiplier together, but you want a lot of this because it's another multiplicative bucket. So that's why we run damage to distance. It's not much better than critical strike chance on rings, which is, I think, the only place we put it, but it is probably a little bit better and so that is a, a priority stat but damage to, to close is much better because it's both additive and multiplicative with most of the damage that we do because we fight close okay defense side we should find a lot to talk about here either uh the healing we talked about that already armor we actually get armor captains built fairly easily so that's nice there's quite a few defensive multipliers on here um and we talk about cyclone armor hurricane which we already talked about a little bit here that is most of the defense 
um, for this build. Okay, as far as stat priorities, there's a couple of things that we should talk about. We already talked a little bit about um, the rings here and taking the damage to distant. I do have right now four critical strike and five. I'm back and forth whether or not I think it should be one or the other. This is honestly not very important. Which, which one of these we take is not very important. They're both they're both number four easily behind these three. So um, you could go either way on this. And yeah, it's, it's still a good stat, but not the difference between those two is minimal. Uh, other stats that we're looking at, a lot of damage reduction in our chest and our um, pants. If you are not in speed farming, in the speed farming variant, that is generally going to be always true with my builds because we get so much damage reduction in those places, which means we need to offload our resistances elsewhere, which is going to be mostly on boots. And then we should have one, you have one slot for helmet. So you put one resistance on your helmet, you put two on your boots. Obviously, this is ideal. Don't like not take resistances on your pants and your chest if like you need it, but you really want to get to boots and helmet to be uh, your three resistances plus your your gems to fill in the rest of the gap. That's how you're going to get to capped. Uh, as far as other stats, basic skill attack speed on helm is always going to be really good. CDR is nice for Petrify, but not amazing in this one because we do get a lot of CD, uh, cooldown reduction from actually just attacking, but it's still good. Uh, lucky hit is good for this build because it just procs a number of things, so we do want lucky hit for sure. Uh, willpower is actually a pretty strong stat now. Willpower is actually better than additive, even on weapons. If we were running a weapon, we'd be running we would be running willpower, and even all stats over additive damage. That's how much. That's how much additive damage is bad, basically, because that uh, willpower goes into a multiplicative bucket. So willpower is actually a pretty good stat, so it goes on gloves. Um, boots, movement speed, those resistances, damage reduction, well, or excuse me, total armor wall and where it will form are your four top stats. Amulet, and venom passive, if you get a, a plus three in this, it's 24% more damage, so really good. Movement speed is also attack speed the, on this build for season two, remember that. CDR, and then one of the damage reduction sources, we've got poison as the number one, but it could be, uh, it could be close. It could even be fortified, honestly, we can move that one up if we wanted to, but, uh, these two are probably a little bit better. Okay, that should be everything as far as that goes. As far as gems... We're going life in our normal gear. We are going single resistances in our rings. Take what you need. You'll probably be moving those around a lot. All right. Not too much to talk about with hardcore adjustments. This is a pretty good hardcore build overall. As far as speed farming goes, Tibalt's Will, Godslayer Crown have made it into this build. Uh, very good. Madibal's Glee is still in technically, but easily taken out for more damage reduction if you want to be a little bit less squishy because it's not as good as it was because the plus three rings to all wearable skills only applies to storm or to a claw now not storm strike some minor adjustments in the skill tree as well mostly just to give you a little bit more clear on this build so we take fierce storm strike um um excuse me that should be uh that should be wild storm strike here i have to switch that out with uh we switch fierce Stor storm strike with wild storm strike and then we switch um to natural hurricane which has been done here properly to get our vulnerable procs uh, we now have a Pinnacle Boss variant in here because the Pinnacle Boss has been defeated by it. I've defeated the Pinnacle Boss uh, with this one. It's very good at it. It just does a lot of damage. So if you want to take on Uber Loth with this build, you absolutely can do that. Um, okay, that should cover pretty much everything. We got some stuff in the FAQ that you can look over, but I think I've actually covered most of it, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, yeah, that's that's the build i hope you guys enjoy this uh it's been really really fun to do this for the last 10 days i, I just really enjoyed stormclaw this season um the attack speed just makes it feel so so good it's just so much fun so hopefully you enjoy it as much as i do enjoy your time in d4 and i will see you all again real soon